All right, uh, I just turned onto the road opposite the museum if you're coming in from the west. Click that in. Uh, when, if you're coming from the west, then uh, you're gonna turn left if you're coming from, no. Yeah, that's right. If you're coming from the west, you're gonna turn left. If you're coming from the east, you're gonna turn right. coming up the lane so I had to move kind of quick uh, but we're going to be going around to this corner where the Gordon modern day uh, farmhouse is. Let me turn around this corner and we're going to push some things up here. Probably be bouncy but I want you to see they really have a beautiful farmstead here and a homestead has a particular meaning meaning the ground was earned from the government originally and a farmstead is a much more developed place. I should mention that this is the first time I have ever met a car going the other direction so it's kind of funny I hit two today the part of that was I stopped. Uh, and I want to make sure to out this porch uh, that used to be before the a museum got built they used to sell souvenirs off of that porch uh, including pencils and that kind of thing and they were able to handle that pretty well uh, and then the television show came and there were all sorts of thousands of people showing up and one day uh, they came home I don't know if it was just back in the house from outside or if they came home. There was a woman standing in their bedroom because she wanted to see the bedroom where Laura lived, which of course was not this house in any way, shape, or form. But uh, it's because of that they asked for help, and that's why there's a Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum. And don't go up to the house now. Exclamation point, exclamation Oops. point. Oops. Don't go up to the house now because they really, uh, really don't meet with the people on any kind of regular basis. Now, they used to think that uh, they had a chicken coop uh, when they, f before Garth Williams came and told them this was the Laura house, there was sort of a building house thing that they tore down to make a chicken coop, and they think that might have been Paws. Uh, it might have been the wonderful house, but they don't know. And it's $7 a car, so I'm going to stop and pay it. And it looks like they have a, that, new, that sign I think is new, I don't remember that. It says, warning Laura almost drowned in Plum Creek, stay away from the swift something water. Swift high water.
All right, I think you missed all of that. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do it again because I paid my money already. But you see there it says, please deposit here. They want you to fold dollar bills in half. They only do cash. You pull down the little silver button at the top, slip the money in, and it's $7 a car or $40 for a tour bus. And with that, we're going on. Now, I'm not sure exactly where, but um, we're current thinking, at least last I heard, was that it was some place right around this area where the family's wonderful house was. Which would make sense. I do not know why they think that. I'm not sure what that noise is over there, which is too bad because it kind of defeats the purpose here. And I'm going to make a couple trips uh, with various cameras and to various points. This is parking lot. I have seen it quite full. Even though there's just two of us here today, uh, I also saw a tour bus, and um, or I have seen tour buses. There is a lot of stuff planted in wildflowers now, and that is basically, gosh, I should have brought my gimbal. That is basically because there is a program that if you plant um, gr uh, farm ground into prairie flowers, or prairie grasses, you get a um, return, or you get a government check. I recorded this originally thinking it was going to be part of uh, the my video of the trip, but I am about to hit some really bad weather, including hail, including a very nasty thunderstorm, and uh, so I gave up getting most of the shots I was going to try and get here at the site. And we are walking right first, though you probably are going to want to walk left first. But the other family went left and I figured it would be better to come right. You can see that we're paralleling Plum Creek. And if want to, you can wade, and I guess, I don't know, I want to do one thing before I tell you to go there. There is, let's see if I can see it through the camera. It's straight across here, there's a thing where the water is dripping down, and there is a spring there. And uh, it is always dripping down. That is not just from the mud. And, you know, whatever that is, it must be on wheels. You can sure hear it louder. Anyway, uh, that is, there is an actual spring there. And probably, uh, at least, there's a decent chance that that is what the Ingalls family used. The spring that Laura put in the actual book, she did not remember and thought maybe they just drank crick water, which they might, because it's normally... Uh, clearer than this. I'm not sure how deep it is. Let's go take a look. 
so their sign says spring this way, dug out that way, which is normally what you want to do first. There are quite a few little walks, so you can plan on spending some time here if you want to, just kind of communing with nature. And I always recommend, if in any way possible, to go waiting. Oh. All right, well, there's more information here on this sign. Let's see how it goes. Um, we believe that the visitors to Laura's childhood home would like, would like to see it as it may have been in 1999 and 2000. The Minnesota DNR, that's the Department of Natural Resources, assisted with the planting of native uh, grasses and flowers near the creek. In 2002, an additional 20 acres were planted under the CREP slash RIM conservation program to enhance your experience and to protect the Minnesota River watershed from farm runoff. And that might be worth its own own video sometime. But for right now, prairies were historically maintained by periodic fires. Currently, the prairie health is maintained by haying one-third of the prairie each year in June. You may enjoy two hiking paths through the prairie starting from the dugout site across the creek. On July 3rd, 2018, the Walnut Grove area received 8 to 10 inches of rain. The historic flooding deposited huge quantities of sand and gravel on the prairie on, on this side of the creek, which will take time to recover. The floodwaters reached the top of the bridge railing. They eroded the parking area a depth, to a depth of about 4 feet. Two picnic tables were recovered a fourth of a mile downstream. The damage to the road and parking lot required 26 semi-loads of clay, rock, and gravel to repair, and a YouTube video shows the damage. It's a lot. I did not realize there was that much rebuilding after 18. So 18 was a terrible flood. It was the first week of the pageant, and the pageant's grounds were trashed, and they had to cancel the pageant that year, and they normally do not ever get um, uh, cancel the pageant, but there was a huge hole in the road. A huge hole in the road. And I will see if I can pull it up and see if I can get permission to add it, because that would be something worth adding. Quick clarification, they only canceled the first weekend of the pageant in 2018, even with all the damage. They were ready to come up with a show by the next week. Anything else I wanted to say at this point? I don't think so. Let's keep going. The big rock was prominent in Laura's memories. It was big enough for Laura and Mary to climb upon and race side by side. However, based upon Laura's sketches, the rock was across the creek behind the dugout. It is possible the rock was removed to make farming easier. The only rock on the farm today is here, nearly submerged. Karen Grassley, Ma Ingalls of Little House on the Prairie, is shown in 1975 standing near the rock. That's a very famous photo, and they sell postcards of it at the museum. Um, this rock once protruded above the ground, but the Surrounding banks rose with silt deposits from spring flood until it is now nearly covered. Unfortunately, efforts in the late 1970s failed to raise the rock uh, 8 by 10 by 10, about 70 tons. And I'm glad they're saying that because, I, as I always like to say, this is a big rock, not the big rock. Um, the way Laura describes it, I really think it was limestone. But I think there's a good possibility that it isn't there. All right. I may not be waiting very far today. 
You really are not seeing the big rock at all. All right, I'm gonna try and put a little snippet. I have to see if I still have the raw footage. I think I do. Um, little snippet of what this used to look like. I am not sure how deep that is. Uh, I should mention they had five inches of rain on Monday, which might be making it deeper than normal. And I would be less concerned if I uh, wasn't wearing the shorts I want to wear all day today. Hadn't thought about that. But that'll be on our next pass around. Like I said, I got all sorts of time to spend out here today. I'm going to walk over here since I'm thinking about waiting. Wow. Usually this is uh, one of the places where people get in. I don't recommend this spot. And it looks worse now. I just had no idea. the. I mean, I knew the 2018 flood was bad, but I did not realize quite how bad it was here. Oh, I guess while I'm walking, that was thunder. I maybe should have gotten up a little earlier. We will see. I told you the leaves were turning over. I am hope that it's going to hold out. Oh, anyway, uh, about harvesting the prairies, it can be difficult to burn them every year, although that is ideal. Uh, an alternative is to mow them once, or once a year, and I guess they're doing a third at a time, which is pretty standard. Okay, here's another place people get in. Oh my, that does not look happy at all. Okay, it may be too high to wade. I am disappointed. Though that is a good lesson. If you're going to wade, another thing you want to do is make sure you have a change, a pair of shorts, if you get wet. This is the footbridge. When it was originally uh, done, it looked a lot more like Laura's, but they decided that wasn't overly safe. Um, and one of the original Gordon's sons was an engineer. He also designed, he was on the board of the museum and also designed the uh, replica dugout that they have there. I am not happy about that. Okay. Now I have a picture I like to use of Paz Field and where it is of is right this area which was in wheat then. I think, I think that might be the third of the prairie they did this year. Otherwise they just cut it for hay, though that looks terrible if they cut it for hay. I don't think so. I think that was part of the Prairie Conservation Project. Now we are going up the hill. There is, like I said, quite a few paths around here.
I am going to be really disgusted if I don't get to do my pictures for it today. Ah, yes, a big round baler. So they are making hay. Wow. If it rained that heavy Monday. Well, anyway, this is a good point to look and you can see town over there. This is showing the maps. Two hiking, or the map, two hiking loops are available to your left and your right. Each is about a half mile in length, which should take 15 to 20 minutes. You'll see several varieties of flowers and grasses. An interpretive sign is positioned on each loop to help you identify some of the prairie flowers during the season. Some of the larger holes you may see near the path path are likely to be fox, perhaps badgers are also present, but they are very wary and seldom seen, which is good because uh, North American badgers are, were called that because they looked like European badgers, but from what I have been told, European badgers are nice, and I can tell you North American badgers are not. In any case, respect the wildlife homes to avoid any injury to yourself or them. All right, now, on my list of things to do, I was planning on uh, walking the trails, but unless this blows over, I don't think that's going to happen. And I'm going to try and get as much here as I can. What was the dugout like? The following excerpt is from On the Banks of Plum Creek was illustrated by Garth Williams, who visited here in 1947. The Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum in Walnut Grove has a dugout exhibit. There is also an exhibit of 1880-era sod houses on the Cone Farm near Sandburg along U.S. Highway 14, and that's um, the place I was going to try to stop on the way there. Now, when they set up the, uh, the this wooden sign I walk around trying to figure out what's making the noise is actually an important thing. It's marking the location of where the dugout used to be. And there were still people who remembered playing in the remains of this dugout up to the 1920s when uh, it had completely collapsed. This was the location, and it was still kind of an indent uh, when they put the sign here, but they didn't used to have this little fenced off area. This sign was put up in the 1960s and this little kind of string fence showed up in the last, oh, I'm going to guess seven, eight years. Uh, so for decades, people stood right there in front of the sign taking pictures. And I really think a lot of that divot that you see today comes from the wear of people standing there, not so much from the dugout, but that is believed to be the location. The sign says, Laura's Dugout Home on the Banks of Plum Creek. The Charles Ingalls family's dugout home was located here in the 1870s. This depression is all that remains since the roof caved in years ago. The prairie grasses and flowers here grow much as they did in Laura's time and the spring still flows nearby. And with that, I think I am gonna head back. Oh, another sign I missed. All right, I'm just gonna Charles Ingalls homesteaded this farm in 1874, when Laura was seven years old. In the century that has passed, Plum Creek has meandered some, but not enough to hide major landmarks. Even though Laura wrote On the Banks of Plum Creek 60 years after living here, her descriptions fit the terrain well. 
When they arrived, Mr. Hansen, real name most likely Andrews Haroldson, had only a small wheat field on this side of the creek. That fall, Pa harvested the hay from the prairie across the creek, plowed it up, and planted wheat and oats the next spring. Within the first year, they built a wooden house, which probably stood across the creek on the level ground just beyond the knoll. The current farmstead was built in 1900 and has no relationship to the Ingalls. The flat-topped hill to your right most likely is the tableland. There are still some deep holes in the creek near there, which could have been Laura's swimming hole. The plum thickets are still here today, some immediately to your right. The spring is to your left among the willows. Laura recalled reaching the spring from the dugout by crossing the creek. Although the creek may have moved several feet, it is unlikely that the spring was on the other side a century ago. The grasshoppers ended the Ingalls' stay here in July 1876. Charles converted the homestead to a cash purchase for $430.18 and sold it immediately to Abraham Keller for $400. The Ingalls family left Walnut Grove for Baroque, Iowa, by way of South Troy, Minnesota, where their relatives lived. Their nine-month-old son, Freddie, died en route and is believed to be buried near South Troy. And I just want to add a comment here that that is an extremely simplified way to explain Charles's land holdings in Walnut Grove, which were pretty complicated. He, there were a couple of properties involved and what he preempted was actually the tree claim because if he had pre, uh, preempted his regular homestead, he could not have homesteaded in Desmet. The government was giving you free land, as they called it, but they weren't giving you an endless supply of it. You got one farm to homestead, one tree claim to homestead, and that's it. So if you want more information on this, I'm going to recommend you go to Pioneer Girl because it's Nancy Cleveland's site and she has done more with property and property records than about anybody I know. And uh, that will give you a lot more accurate information. Okay, now I'm going to head back to the car. And I may drive back into town and see and see if this storm clears up later. I may come back after doing the museum. And this might be it, which I would be very sorry about because I had all sorts of stuff for photos to take this time. But at least I got the video, I hope, done. It's never rained on me in Walnut Grove. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. It has never rained on me when I was out and about in Walnut Grove. I was in town once where there was a uh, lightning storm that didn't actually cancel the, the pageant. They stayed in their cars for I don't remember how long. And uh, I had decided not to go that day because I had seen the pageant the year before and I was uh, coming off of a thing that I had a lot of stuff to do and I just decided it wasn't worth the pageant. 
Now I might actually wait here a little bit. That isn't that long a cloud. Maybe I could get my pictures. Definitely not waiting though. Which makes me feel sad because I brought a towel all the way from home to, to go waiting. And have you gone waiting in the creek lately since 2018? Let me know. I'm sure it's still nice to wade in, but it doesn't look like the easy way to get in is still there, and it might be a lot deeper. All right, thank you for coming with me today. And this is the uh, dugout site. Remember I said the leaves were turning over? All right, I uh, am it is doing a proper storm. This has never happened to me in Walnut Grove either. It has been a month of first. So with that, I'm going to head on into the museum. If it breaks by the time I finish there, I may be back out, uh, which is terrible because I had all sorts of pictures to, that I wanted to take and I just did the video. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I just want to give an update. In the video, I was talking about, you know, the leaves are turning over, and then I said, oh, there's thunder, and then it started to rain, and then it started to rain kind of hard, and I thought, well, we'll just wait here a little bit. And then there was some pea-sized hail, like about the size of the end of your little finger. I don't know if you can... And they bounced off the car, and I was like, okay, I'm not waiting this here. Uh, so I started to drive into town to stop the museum, and on my way, it suddenly stopped raining. So I'm going to try and get a few things. There were some things that I'm just not going to, um, because they would involve laying down, and... I am not entirely sure it isn't going to start raining again. So we're going to try and get some stuff and we'll see what we get.